Hi, I'm Brett Lonsdale here with Sandy Ucia. How are you, Sandy? Very good. Thanks, Brett. How are you? Yeah, doing really well. Thank you. It's Friday, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's only been a busy week. Mm. Um, we've, uh, as you know, Sandy, we, we've been concentrating on some data integration uh, this month, uh, January 24th, with, um, with, with our products. And uh, one of the reasons for that is actually the um, announcement that came about in May last year about the deprecation of business connectivity services uh, in SharePoint Online. Mm. So uh, business connectivity services is an area that we've always been involved in from day one of, uh, of Lightning. So we Literally. created BDC Metaman. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, BDC Metaman uh, came before Lightning Tools. Uh, <laughs> so the product came first. Uh, so we created the company around BDC Metaman and, and that data integration from the business uh, data catalog and business connectivity services into uh, into SharePoint. And um Quite some time ago, uh, many, many years ago, in fact, we created a product called the Data Viewer. And uh, the, the Data Viewer is a really an obvious choice as to a direct replacement to the business connectivity services external list, and also some of those BDC web parts as well that you had inside of SharePoint. Um, and one, one, I guess, drawback of uh, the external list and the web parts was that they were actually you know, classic components, mm -hmm. um, not modern component, components for, for SharePoint Online. And um, for that reason, I think, you know, we, we have seen that that feature uh, disappear and mm -hmm. is not going to be available inside of tenants anymore uh, going forward through uh, through 2024. So I, I think it's a, a great opportunity to have a look at the data viewer and uh, and how that can be used to to connect to some, some data sources. So, Sandy, I believe you're going to be doing a lot of the talking today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we're going to show really quickly today just how to display some data from uh, SQL tables in SharePoint Online. And something that you may have done in the past with BCS data is have parent and child tables where you have um, the BDC web part or BCS web part and a related list web part where you can choose one item from one list, the parent, and then be able to um, show the matching things in the child web part. So I've got a couple things set up here already, and we'll just go through how to go about creating those. So if I edit my page here in SharePoint, then what I could do is add a um, data viewer web part. So I'll just show where that would be. Uh, of course, I use that a lot. So it's our and my frequently used. But if you have the Lightning data viewer installed, then you can access it through here. But I've already got a couple here. So first, I set up the product categories data viewer. And so I'll just show you how that's set up. And then we'll have a step by step on how you would actually go about doing that. Notice that I've added a web part title here, product categories, and that lets me reference it more easily in the second web part. Then to configure it, I went in and chose SQL Azure as my data source provider. You've got lots of different choices, but in this example, we're going to use SQL Azure. And then all you need to do is put in your server name. Your um, we're using SQL authentication, so your username and password. And then once you load entities, then you can choose from any of the databases. And this would have a drop down when you click load entities, and then choose one of your tables. So I'm looking at the product category table in that standard AdventureWorks Microsoft database sample. Then you choose your columns that you want to display. So here I'm just displaying my category names and IDs. And then in the display tab, I can say um, if I want to give those any formats or things like that. But the key thing here is I want to allow selecting rows. That's going to give me a little circle over to the left here where I can select one of those items and have it um, filter the other web part. So that's the key point on that. Then on my second data viewer web part, which I've named products in the web part title, the configuration of that is almost the same. It connects to SQL Azure and again with the same uh, credentials, but this time using the product table out of the AdventureWorks database. In the columns, I've chosen to just show the name and the list price, but I also need to have the product category ID so that I can link it to the, uh, to the other web part. And I also need the product ID, which is the primary key of this table so that I can do things like create, update, delete. Uh, you have to have the primary key selected to be able to do that. 
the other key on this um, key, so to speak, on this screen is to add a filter to the product category ID. So what I did here was click the filter icon and then uh, I want it to, I want the product category ID to equal what I've selected over in the product category web part. So I click the little plug icon, which is what we use for our uh, dynamic data connections. Um, I choose the data source, which in this case is the data viewer that's called product categories. And I want it to display the selected items rather than all of the retrieved items, meaning all of the categories. Uh, so the selected categories. And what I want it to match on is the category ID. So that's your, your primary key and your foreign key in the relation right, exactly. with the space at the back end. Exactly, so, yeah. yep. <laughs> then on the display tab, <clears throat> I'm going to, I really only want to display the, the name of the product and its price in currency. So I can format that easily here, by the way. <laughs> it's easier than it was in the uh, BCS web parts. <laughs> and um, I want to allow insert, update, and delete. So I've turned those all on. They're off by default, but you can turn them on. And uh, that's where I needed that um, product ID to show. And these two fields, the, pro the category ID and the product ID, I don't really want to display those to my users. So I can go to the overflow menu here and turn off the show uh, option. And that way they are there and usable, but they're not going to display to the users. So how this works then, if I go and republish my page, although it would work without publishing actually. <laughs> Um, it's got, I've got all of my product categories in the left-hand web part and the products in the right-hand web part. And if I select one of the ones in the categories, then it's going to show me only those products that are in that category on the right side. And I could select more than one and it would add to that and show me you know, the ones that fit that category. And then because I turned on the create, update, delete, if I um, click on the if I select one, then it gives me a data input form. I can edit it uh, or delete it. And uh, as well, I can add a new product if I wanted to. And that would go, it's connected to your SQL database. So it would go right into the SQL table. So similar to how BCS um, external lists weren't really, the data isn't in SharePoint, you're just showing the data that's in SQL. And so any changes are uh, automatic and, and immediate. And that's how you can display related tables in a, on a SharePoint page without that's being fantastic. CS. <laughs> that, that's great. And I, I think just, just worth pointing out as well that um, you know, one thing is, is even the BDC web parts uh, back then, you could still only select one thing from the one mm -hmm. side. Uh, mm -hmm. You couldn't have uh, for multiple selections. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you wanted to, I mean, if we are going to go out and buy a bike, you might want to buy the bike uh, as well as some of the accessories and, and list all of those in, in one place. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, you know, a perfect scenario to be able to do that rather than actually going through and selecting them just one by one. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the other observation is that there doesn't actually have to be a relationship uh, mm. created in whatever the data source is. Oh, true. Um, this is all happening client side within inside the, uh, the SharePoint site itself. So you could even have two completely different um, web parts getting data from two different mm. sources. And if there's something in common, it doesn't have to be a primary key and a foreign key. Mm. It could just be uh, you know, a text field of some sort that, mm. uh, that, that is used. Uh, you could still create that connection because it would just filter on the value that's provided. And you could have mm. a, a contains or a like, uh, greater than etc oh, yeah, it doesn't really have to be that, that equal to so so yeah it's awesome. uh way beyond just um you know database relationships here uh you, you could do a lot, lot more with that with that uh, with multiple data sources so um and and also uh it also doesn't have to be the uh, the, the grid view that we're seeing we mm -hmm. could also generate charts right. um so if you imagine uh, over on the left-hand side, we could have, um, for example, I'm um, just going to have a sales scenario here where we might have um, different countries that we sell into. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to understand, well, you know, what, what's the total of sales that we've got from France and Germany and Spain, uh, we could go through and select those three and display the content not only in a grid view, but also in a chart as well. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. you could see your sales revenue with maybe, uh, you know, sort of cost of sales and things like that mm -hmm. uh, associated with it. Should we do that in the next video? Uh, yeah, put a comment like a and then <laughs> let us know if you'd like to see how to do that. 
that sounds great. But um, yeah, if, if you want to play around with the data viewer, you can get it from lightningtools.com. Uh, you'll find it under the products menu. Uh, there is a, a 30 day trial. So if there is uh, relational databases or other data sources that you want to connect to, uh, either directly like the, the SQ uh, or, or sorry, SQL uh, version that you uh, you just demonstrated. Um, but you could also connect to uh, things like Jira and uh, Salesforce, et cetera, using a, a graph connector too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, have a go with it and, and see if you can connect to the data sources that you need to. Great. Sounds good. All right. Well, till next time. Sounds good. Take care, right. Sandy. Thanks okay, a lot for thanks. the demo. You too. Bye. All right. Bye.